What's up everybody? I'm Brandon and you're watching John Boat River Cats. Today we're back out on the river and we got something different for bait. Just a big shell cracker. All right. Get my big rod here. I'm going to hook him through the back right there. Looking at 14 foot of water here. Drop this live bluegill down. Beat this rod. I'm gonna suspend that one right there. Next piece of bait is going to be a cut bait. Let's grab one of these bluegill here. These bluegill are pretty good size. They're uh, that's an eight-inch bluegill right there. So I mean, we got some good size bluegill, and um, if I don't lose them. I like to keep mine alive, and the reason is it makes sure they're fresh when I go to cut into them. I mean, it doesn't get any fresher than that. Cut some of these fins. Now I caught a, uh, I know a lot of people don't use these pieces, but I caught a 32 pound blue in the winter time on a frozen tailpiece, just like that. So they will butt it, even frozen. So don't be afraid to throw that piece on a rod. We got three nice pieces here, good piece of, good bluegill head. Good piece of body there and another good piece of body. Don't worry, he's dead. He's just nerves, nerves kicking. All right. Nobody said anything yet, but I'm, I've been waiting on a environmentalist or whatever you want to call them. Tree hugger to come in here and 
tell me about my bait and how I do it. It's just how I do my bluegill. I want my bluegill. I feel like the top of a rock there. Right. And I got a rod out to do that on and didn't even use it. That's all right. I normally wait to put my rods in the rod holders as I'm putting bait on them. I'll just leave them in the storage area. Kind of makes it less uh, cluttered. So I'm gonna put two back here and I'm gonna put two up on the front rod holders. And um, we'll see what happens. Marking a little something down there. Question is, are they biting today? Had a big storm come through yesterday. Kevin's been up here messing with my rod holders. Let's see. Now I got to find my wrench and tighten that back down. But go ahead and get this piece on. Getting hit on a loud bluegill. Oh. Looks like we're hooked. Oh, we were hooked up. He's still on there though. I don't know how lively he is. Still flapping us. All right. Wasn't getting a whole lot of luck towards the middle, so uh, started moving over here towards the edge. I'm hooked up here. Nothing big. Not a bad one though. Just all wrapped up. It's a good eater size. And I'm planning on keeping some today. Really? Are you just gonna do that? Lord have mercy, I can't hold on to nothing today. Nothing wrong with this bluegill head. So we're gonna throw it back on. This 
swear the great thing about these aluminum boats is you can really hear when you get a hit. There we go. Fish number two. On the bluegill head. I really want the bluegill head today. All right, a couple more of these, and that's all I'm gonna keep. in the water. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. It ain't a proper fishing trip unless you forget something in the truck or at the house. Luckily, this time I was just a truck and it's not really that big of a deal. I grabbed my coffee, but I had three other drinks that I left in the truck. <laughs> oh, me. Gotta love it. Hooked up here. Decent one. And just a pulling. Oh. Another one on the bluegill head. We're only in 15 foot of water. Marked one on the grab. I didn't think he was going to hit it, but he did. It's a nice male. Nice strong male there. A little bigger than what I want to keep. So we'll throw him back. Hopefully we'll get this broom head back. And he did not get a lot of energy out. They don't really do in the shallow water. Unless you just let them swim around. Yeah, he's a little bigger than what I want to keep. Not a bad one, though. Got a spot on top of his head here. See if I can get out of the sun so you can see it. Yeah. Not a bad one. Nice male. Let's get him back. <laughs> Smack my boat. That is fine with me. I guess he was giving me a high five like, thank you, buddy. Thank you for putting me back. Don't you worry, you were a little too big for me. Kind enough to give us the head back. I'm gonna, heck, I'm gonna throw it back on. Why not? It's catching fish. So I've dropped anchor. I'm gonna set up in front of this creek mouth. See if we can't get anything to bite. Anchored up. I'm going to cast some baits up.
he tapped it. I was getting a battery out to change battery. Decided to come back to it, I guess. Yeah. Finally, it's been a couple hours with no luck. I was drifting for a while, suspended, and uh, wasn't getting any luck, so I decided to anchor up here. I've been here about 30 minutes. Uh, I've had a couple of taps. I decided to make my bait smaller um, because uh, wasn't getting luck with uh, larger baits so I actually took and cut a head off of a bluegill and then I cut the head down to make it smaller I just cut that top uh, head meat off and the belly meat off and that's this one right here pretty sure of it it feels like it's going to be a pretty good fish. Of course, there is current. But, uh, might be pretty decent. Might be too big to keep, let's put it that way. Maybe not. It might be good eater size. Just a lot of current. Good fighting fish, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Check them out. Fighting hard. It's not just the current. He's swimming, swimming upstream, and still, still fighting pretty good. Nice male, it's not too big, we might keep that one. That was a good takedown though. Yeah, that's a good size keep. You like to bite, don't you? What is it with you aggressive males and loving to bite? So much. Yeah, we can get some nice flays out of you. For the time being, I'm gonna set you on the in the cooler until I get my stringer ready. All right, let's get us another bait on and let's. Uh, to get another one now we're down to pretty much the big bluegill and uh, big shell cracker now there's a smaller one right there i want to throw another small head piece on like that cut the head and the belly meat out let's get our hook get our line unwrapped let's go through the bottom and out of the nostril Gonna throw it straight out the back. Right about there. All right, battery's probably getting pretty low. I'm gonna go ahead and switch out this battery, and hopefully we'll get us another one. Here's a look at that last blue we got. 
all kinds of different colors, like a camo color. A little scratched up. Wanted to show them to you before I threw them on the stringer. I'm going to get that rope off of that uh, rod holder and get them on there. In the meantime, hopefully we get another bite. We are hooked up again. If we get this one in, that'll be all the eater fish I want. That's all I'm going to feel like for laying out today anyway. It feels about the same. They're eating these brim heads up. I swear I'm getting ready to cut every head off of these brim. And just line my rods with bluegill heads. Because they're eating them up. That has been the only thing that I've caught a fish on today is a bluegill head. So it makes sense, you know. Plus it's getting close to the time that I wouldn't mind getting out of here. Getting back to the house and get these filleted out and I've got some editing to do. So, I love fighting these fish in this current. They feel so big. This might be a little better fish. Yeah. Another nice blue. Another male. These males are feeding up. And they're very mean. blue yep, that's all the eater fish I want so get them on the stringer it's a pain in the butt because these are these fish want to bite for some reason and they don't want to open up for me to pull it through so I'm going to leave that just like that This one might cooperate with me. All right. Once you get one on, what you do is we got just a loop on the other end, and um, you uh, loop. Put the put this end through the loop. The end I just put through the gills. Put that through the loop. And then um, pull it all the way back through. And then every fish, all you gotta do is put them on this end and pull them down. And you're good to go. So we definitely have all our eater fish. Probably should get more and just spend the day filleting out. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna throw this headpiece back down. I got a mess in here now. From all these ropes. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna throw this headpiece back out. Cause I'm sure it'll catch another fish. through the other nostril 
or whatever it's called. I just call it the nostril. That's basically what it looks like. And we're going to throw out straight out the back again. About the same, same spot. And uh, let's get some brim heads. Hey guys. Oh, now we're getting hit here. That's the same head piece I've had on. Yep, yep. Uh-huh, you want it. Be a little smaller than the other ones. The other ones really just inhaled it and took off with it. Yes, sir. We are hooked up. Right. Ha 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 ha. He come off. No, he didn't. He's just swimming upstream. He's coming straight to me. That is funny. Oh, he almost got me. Wasn't pulling there for a while. I'm gonna tell you what guys, anchoring up has been has become my favorite way to catch catfish. And we're gonna keep that one too. I need some fillets. Another nice male. These males are feeding up really good. More meat. That hook is through the bottom. There we go. Another one on the headpiece. Another male. Not a bad one. Still a good eater. About 10 pounds. All right. He's getting... All right. Bring this one in between these two. Swimming right to me. Let's bring them to this side over here. Yeah. This one feels more like an eater. Smaller, a little smaller than the last one for sure. Good size. Yes, sir. So this time of year, fish are going in the shallows uh, to get ready to spawn and they're feeding on other fish that are spawning or getting ready to spawn so what you get at a creek mouth is this the highway for them to get to the shallows 
so you catch them coming in and out of the creek where it's shallow. And I'm sure you've seen me fish this spot before. That's the mouth creek, or the creek of the, oh my goodness, the mouth of the creek right there. And it kind of curves on out and goes into the main channel here. And I'm pretty much just catching them coming in and out. Another fish on. That's what I'm talking about. Another one on the headpiece. Another decent blue. Another hungry male. Shell cracker head. So, right here, guys, my mic died. Um, that was my sixth fish that I was going to keep. Uh, I know I earlier said I only wanted to keep like four, but I was like, you know what, I need to go ahead and stock up on some meat. So, I got quite a bit out of it um probably had around 65 70 pounds of fish um so i probably got about 30 35 pounds of meat out of that so it was a uh, overall good fishing trip
Well guys, that's gonna wrap up the video. Had a darn good time out here today. Caught a bunch of fish, uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 pounds. I uh, got a few to fillet when I get home, so I gotta get there, get that done, and uh, do some other stuff before I go to bed tonight. So um, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you slam that like button, share the video with your friends and family, cast a comment down below, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Also, hit that notification bell so you know next time and anytime I post a video. You've been on the water with John Boat River Cats. Catch you on the next one.